what else is new? Well, it's difficult to know where to start. Well, look, let's start with Control, because let's start at home, you know, British movie, and it's always good to see a British movie that we can actually be excited about. So Control, um, a sort of biopic of Ian Curtis and Joy Division, based, loosely based, on Deborah Curtis's uh, memoir, uh, Touching from a Distance. Now, as everyone knows, we had not so long ago 24 Hour Party People, which I think was an, a wonderful film. Michael Winterbottom did a brilliant job of kind of chronicling the, the, the rise and fall of factory records. And there was so much going on in that film, and Joy Division played a little part in it. And then there's, you know, The Fall played a little part in it, and The Mondays played a little part in it. And it's really extraordinary. This is very specifically about Ian Curtis and Joy Division, Ian Curtis's relationship with his wife, Ian Curtis's relationship with his lover, Ian Curtis's relationship with epilepsy, Ian Curtis's very, very troubled relationship with fame. It's uh, directed by Anton Corbine. His name is spelled... Is it Corbin? Corbin. Corbin. Anton okay. Corbin, yeah. But it's spelled Corbin. But it's, it's abroad. It's from abroad. It's from it? abroad, and okay. that's, that's why it's confusing. Who, for people of my age, you'll remember as you know, a rock photographer and then a video director, and had an extraordinarily good eye, and the film is shot in this kind of you know, monochrome which very much evokes the classic images of Joy Division, some of which were taken you know, by, you know, by other photographers, you know, obviously. Um, but it's, it's, it's really got the look of it right. Now, the most interesting thing about it is, at a very early stage, there was a decision taken that Sam Riley, who's the guy playing Ian Curtis, was going to do his own vocals. And then it became apparent that actually the band might try and do their own music as well. And of course, if you know anything about Joy Division, you know, Joy Division songs aren't that hard to play. Anyway, the crucial thing about it is, Sam Riley, who is, a, a, I think, you know, a great and emergent talent, who's in a band called 10,000 Things, which I've never heard of before, but apparently they're pretty riotous. I don't know whether they're even still going. Are you, you're up with music. Do you know 10,000 Things? No, 10,000 Maniacs. No, 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 not them. Not the 10,000 Things, I'm afraid, no. No, nope, sorry. Different band completely. 10,000 Maniacs I've heard of. This is another band who aren't called that. Okay, this isn't going anywhere. No, right. fine. Okay, so Sam Riley. You know that band you just mentioned? Yeah, you've never, never heard of them either. Fine. Them. Sam Riley has been a rock performer, and you know he's played with uh, you know, you know with, with bands, so he has some kind of rock presence anyway. But what he does is he plays the character of Ian Curtis, and he does that really well. He clearly has got his acting chops. He actually had a small role, I think, in uh, Twenty Four Hour Party People. But when he gets on stage to perform the Joy Division songs, what you get is the voice of the, per the person who you've been watching develop as a character. And I think this is really important. I think if you look at a film like La Vie en Rose, which a lot of people really like, the main problem with La Vie en Rose is there's no continuity between the voice of the character, as played by Marianne Cotillard, and the singing voice, the Edith Piaf singing voice. Now, the argument is, well, nobody can sing like Piaf. Maybe Marianne Cotillard can't sing it. Personally, I would rather hear somebody badly doing Edith Piaf, but doing it in their voice, than watch somebody lip-syncing to Piaf records. I mean, I think, for example, Gary Boosie doing his own vocals in the Buddy Holly story is very, very important. It's a continuity of voice. And what you get with um, with Control, which I keep wanting to call Closer, because you know, of course, you know, the Joy Division yeah, the album, yeah. Unknown Pleasures, Closer, Still, which everybody says, oh, that's obviously it's a sentence. Unknown Pleasures, Closer, Still. But um, obviously not you but no no i realize that thank you very much okay so what you're getting is that the continuity of his voice as this tortured character then you then hear that in the songs and it actually makes sense in a way that a lot of rock biopics don't do point number one i think that's very important point number two it's a very unflashy movie but it is visually stylish in a way which completely fits the material not only because it reminds you of those extraordinary images that you used to see Joy Division, you know, on that the, the bridge, the flyover in Manchester, which was on the front cover of the NME, and then you know, sub, later later on became iconic. And I remember when I was at college, everyone had that posted on their on their wall. I have to say, I was never a big Joy Division fan. I was always a Comsat Angels fan. I always thought the Comsat Angels sounded like what Joy Division would sound like if they could play and sing. So you know, that's another thing you were wrong about. No, I was right about it. You weren't. No, no, I was. If you I, seriously, if you put the first three Comsat Angels albums back to back with the Joy Division album, what would you think would happen if we had a Comsat Angels versus Joy Division text vote? Well, I'm telling you now that, yes. the, that the three, the, 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 Waiting for a Miracle, Sleep No More, and Fiction, between them are a better trilogy of albums than Unknown Pleasures, Closer, and Still. I'm sorry, they just are. It, they, it, there's, you know, it's not. You go ahead, you put it to the country if you want to, but it's, uh, you know, you, you may not have the same landslide as you had with Lilac Wine and, and, and Bonio, but the Comsat Angels were a better. Uh, it doesn't matter in relation to the film, I'm just telling you as a matter of fact, the Comsat Angels were a better band. It's text only till a quarter two, but it would just be interesting to know just how wrong you are on a scale of wrongness with, you know, Elvis is still alive at one end with Neil Young at the other. 
Okay, things I've been wrong about. Is just see where Comsat Angels versus Joy Division comes in. Yeah, sorry, Comsat Angels all the way. Anyway, to finish this, because there are other good things about the movie as well. Samantha Morton, who plays um, Ian Curtis's long-suffering, it has to be said, spouse, I think does a great job with a, with a frankly difficult role and a somewhat underwritten role. Ironically, of course, since it's based on Deborah Curtis's original memoirs, but she does bring real heart and soul to that to that that role and makes her so much more than just the cipher just the wife that gets left at home and in the end it may be true that you don't get right inside the mind of the character in a which is it may be that Ian Curtis was fairly impenetrable and there are certainly things about his character that in the end remain completely impenetrable but its heart is solidly in the right place its music is spot on its visual you know, facility is absolutely as it should be. It features a couple of really, really outstanding performances. As a debut feature, it's hard to fault. And although I have to say personally, I think 24 Hour Party People is a more important film. Having seen Control first in Cannes and then back here now, I think it's a really fine piece of work. And I would rather, and I know other people have said this because this is what everyone was saying in, in Cannes, I'd rather listen to those guys playing the Joy Division songs than listen to Joy Division playing them.